With the divorce rate in America hovering around 50 percent, chances are you're either part of a blended family or you know someone who is. That means there's a lot of step-parents and step-kids out there. Here to help with that sticky situation is parenting expert and stepmom Margaret Crane. She's the author of several books, including the forthcoming book for teens, How to Train Your Parents in Less Than One Week. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you very much. Margaret, is a step-parent doomed to be that second-class parent? No, absolutely not. In fact, I have several tips for parents and step-parents that will help you get through things much easier. First of all, I would say this: the step-parent needs to lower their expectations. Sometimes the parents are so eager to be loved and accepted that they are trying too hard. So they might say, well, you know, it'll probably take six months, whereas my, my feeling when I married into the family was it might take five years. So aim low. Aim low, yes. Not, not to say that um, things are terrible. It'll just be easier. Kids will love you when they're ready to love you, and trying to speed it up will actually slow things down. So that's the first one. The second one is focus on being loving rather than being loved. Sometimes we get way too caught up in how the kids are feeling about us, and we forget that we need to be loving to the kids without expecting anything in return. Again, there's a lower your expectations. Just stay out of the part of, you know, how they're responding. Yes, they need to be cordial to you. They need to be polite. They need to be responsive. But whether they love you or not, that'll happen in time. They're not responsible for your emotions and they're not responsible for your emotional well-being. And the third tip for step parents is to just be real. Share something about who you are. Talk about feelings, talk about your thoughts, talk about your opinions without being heavy-handed and without lecturing. Just sort of from your heart and not as a class, so to speak. You're just sharing a little tidbit here and there and that will help the kids get to know you better. So does that storybook archetype of the evil stepmother or the evil stepfather, does that make it harder for real people now? Definitely there's an assumption with stepkids, like the thought is, oh God, you know, what if I get the evil stepmom or the evil stepdad? And I think there is that underlying part that 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 could happen, but I don't think it has to happen. It hasn't happened in our family, although we've had our own ups and downs and that sort of thing, but it doesn't have to happen. And here are some tips for parents that can really smooth the way for the incoming parent, the step-parent. First of all, it's really important to understand that you're bringing a new person into the family, completely new, and your family may have some conflict and heartache around this because of the divorce itself, because if there was a death, just because of that sort of thing. So it's really important to support your spouse emotionally. Your spouse may need you to, to really understand where they are. Another thing is this isn't a contest between your kids and your new spouse. You can choose them both. Sometimes kids will sort of dare you. Is it me or is it the new spouse? You don't have to choose like that. And I've seen a lot of marriages fall apart because the biological parent goes back and forth between choosing the kids or the new parent, the new spouse. And it's not going to work that way. So you can choose them both. And then here's a step towards that also is, that the new step-parent should be included in the parenting decision. My feeling is that whenever you're parenting, if there's another parent, there should be co-parenting anyway. If you don't include the new step-parent in the parenting decisions, it shows them or it seems to suggest that you don't trust them. And if you don't trust them, then why did you marry them? They, They are part of your family now. It seems like one of the things that are inevitable is the scene where the kid says, I don't have to do what you say. You're not my mama. Where does the step-parent fit into the authority structure? Right. So this is something definitely to talk about ahead of time with the parent. This is where co-parenting comes in. If the children know that you are co-parents and that you've discussed things, then the kids can't pit one of you against the other. This is something that I've seen a lot also with the biological parent who says, um, yeah, you're going to need to stay out of, like, for instance, disciplining my kids, or you're going to need to stay out of this decision or that decision. Um, it really, that, that does a lot to make the step-parent a second-class citizen. It's really important to say to the new parent, here's what I'm thinking. This is what I would like from you. What is your feeling about it? So that you're in, you're playing the same game, so to speak, and that the kids see that. They won't be challenging the step-parent or the parent repeatedly. Margaret, this is great advice, and I really appreciate you taking your time to be with us here on the Como News Network. Once again, that's parenting expert Margaret Crane.